guys, welcome to the channel. It's Adam with ND72. So today we're back with my SLK32. So if you remember this car, we're building it to basically go 10 seconds. We added some more power on the last video. Now we're doing roughly right under 24 PSI of boost, which is a little bit too much boost. The ECU is not liking it. So what we got today is some cool parts to hopefully we fix all that. All right, guys, just quickly to go what is already done to the car. For pulley-wise, we got a 65 millimeter clutch delete from <clears throat> VTEC. We got the 178 crank pulley from needs wings 82 millimeter port of snout throttle body needs wings intake which is really cool i like the color a lot and some long tube headers and then a lot of supporting mods but we're running into that issue where we're getting too much boost roughly 24 psi at 90 degree weather so we have to buy something to kind of fix that so what we got here is a full kit from needs wings all this stuff is basically purchased from needs wings i mean except from my torque wrench now we're gonna break down what we really have here. We have modified encoded surge tanks. These basically have the crossovers and the modified, I don't even know what you, elbows you would call them that are supposed to be bigger. And it has some bungs to basically put boost gauges on them. I think you do methanol. And we have a modified Y pipe that goes to the intake that is coated and ported. We also got some new stainless steel hardware to mount these up. And this kit comes with all the clamps you need he also sent me some brand new gaskets in case you guys need the numbers. And everything from Rob at Needs Wings. This is a great kit. Really thankful for it. And I'll show you how to install it. Alright guys, so what we got here is we got roughly the kit that will allow me to hopefully drop roughly a few PSI and boost. So, this will drop boost but add horsepower because it's relieving pressure. So from what I'm reading and what I was told by Rob and I contacted a few other people who are running a setup with a lot more boost, they've done these manifolds and they dropped extreme amount of boost but gained so much power. So basically what these are, let me take them apart. So when you get the kit, I order the crossover so you get a surge, the surge tank which are the manifolds. Mine are coded to match it so you can pick whatever color you want. So what they do is basically they chop off the end over here that is kind of like choked down. I'll show you once we pull the factory one off. And then this basically adds so much more volume to the whole system. And it should relieve it, relieve pressure. And they weld up a series of crossovers which also add volume to the system. And from my understanding, how this kind of works is you cause boost, boost then shot into this cylinder and then would fill up these three cylinders but now since it crossovers, it'll actually help equalize the pressure, from my understanding. That way your boost is a lot more consistent from side to side, and it should alleviate pressure. Also, they should be, ooh, don't break them. They should be, since it comes with these silicone couplers, it should be pretty easy to install on and off. I've seen one kit before where it was actually one complete unit, and I don't really like that kind of style of it, just because if you have any, like, movement or anything like that it won't bolt on the seal perfectly also what these guys got is if you notice it kind of has a little bevel over there so it'll actually clamp down and you shouldn't really have any boost leak with that rob also sent me some brand new gaskets over there where i'll throw on and then also what i got is i'm going to verify how much this is actually poured out by just looking at it this is a modified y pipe this one actually goes from the intercooler up this is what the surge tanks actually bolt onto or silicone onto and it's coated, so it's thermal coated, so we might drop a couple temps doing there. And then final, this was not part of this kit. I ordered it because they're cheaper. So I was having issues with my bolts. If you notice on a couple of mine, it's just over time, you might kind of start stripping out the torques. And I went to Mercedes, they're like $125 for the set. I just called up Rob and I got the whole stainless steel set for relatively cheap. So in this video, we're gonna install all this. Hopefully it should be a pretty quick and easy install. Then we'll go for a test drive. And this, I'm hoping, will drop my boost down so I'm not messing with the ECU, like, confusing it anymore. Because right now, if you remember from the last video, once we added that 178 crank pulley, we're now at 124, we're at, the, we're at 24 PSI of boost. So I've talked to a couple people. Some people said this has dropped about 3 PSI. Some people are saying 5 PSI. We'll see what it actually does in my application. If it gets me down to 18 PSI, I will be so happy. Because from my understanding, when I was dealing with this and talking to other people, right at roughly like 21 PSI, your ECU every once in a while will start giving you in that little weird limp mode. And if you don't have an AFR gauge, you're not really going to know it's doing it. But it is kind of unsafe. 
and everyone's application might be a little bit different so we're gonna see what this does in my setup on everything I got and they look cool so it matches my intake and then we'll see how it goes on and see what it looks like so first things first you're gonna take off your surge tanks it's pretty easy you're gonna get a Torx and mine is a 30 Torx and you're gonna have a bolt on each you're gonna have to do each side individually so where they are is you're gonna have one bolt here two three four five six on each bank and this one's one two three four five six over here and we're gonna start breaking these loose and then whizzing them off so now that we got all these bolted off I'm now gonna start undoing my intake and then getting right down by the Y pipe off once I pull the intake I'll show you a little bit better all right, now that we got all my uh, intake stuff off, this is where we're gonna break it off from the surge tanks. These on my setup are eight and then a seven down there. These probably aren't the factory clamps, so we'll break those loose and then take each surge tank off at a time. All right, so we got the old one off and comparing the old, the old and the new, it definitely looks like they were a little bit of gasket matched, a little bit of porting over here. Cause if, when I put the gasket on, I can see a little bit more overlay on this one, but they're so much more smoother inside and they got the crossover. So, and that's this is the part that I was talking about choking down. So if you look right here, you see how this is like basically neck down over here, but with the new one, whoop, 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 whoops, it is so much thicker. Like I cannot fit my hand around there and you could just see a huge night and day difference of like, look it, I could touch fingers easily. And then this aftermarket one, not even close. So this should be a big improvement just with this little pipe here that they built. And like, I mean, you could definitely tell just like on this view, look how much fatter that is. Like I'll actually grab a micrometer and see. So right at the neck down part, it is 39.4. And then when you come over to the aftermarket one, it is open, open, open. And then you come to the aftermarket one, it is 60. So that is like 20 millimeters overall wider all around on the aftermarket needs wings one than this factory one. So that should help out a lot. Plus these whole crossovers, they'll help out. So now we're going to start ripping off the Y pipe and then put everything on. This is a super quick and easy build. All right, I'm going to try to show you the Y pipe part. It's a little bit hard to see. This is going to be a different angle for a lot of people. Just depends where you left the clamps. So if you look, literally try to look straight in the center of the screen, right, right here is a clamp. Let me try to like get the light in there a little bit better. Can you see it? Like look right, right there is that clamp. So this is your um, air temp sensor. So you have to undo the plug. I'm just, I just did the top plug. As you can see, I left the sensor in there. So that clamp is the one you got to undo. So I have a series, I have an extension just for how mine is sitting. I'm hoping I can sneak it in around over here and then I'll just break that loose. All right, so we got our factory one all out, and then this is the needs wings, pretty sure ported a little bit one. So if you could see maybe from the human eye, like in human form, you can see a lot better, where it's kind of ported in the center, and it looks like it's got a little bit on the inside, but needless to say, it's gonna be brand new, it's coated, and mine had a hole drilled in it for boost. So now we're gonna relocate it, so no matter what, it's brand new and coated, so we're gonna throw it in there. And basically you put it in the exact same way you took it out, just reverse order. One recommendation when you go to put it back in, I know it's gonna be a crappy angle, but you see these clips right here? Come on, come on. Spin them so they're easy to get at and make sure you clean everything up. See now how I put mine up straight? So now I should be able to just shoot straight down and tighten it up instead of doing that weird angle. So we're gonna clean it all up and then throw that in there. So you got the Y pipe right back in. I'm gonna leave it loose a little bit because you get a little bit of wiggle. That way until I get everything lined up. And as you see, like I said, I moved my clamp right there. So we're going to do a surge tank. We're going to do this side first. No real reason why. I just want to. Because once I line up this surge tank and I know it's good, then I could pull it right back off and zip that down. So the kit also comes with the plugs. So make sure you plug up any ports that you're not using. Put some Teflon tape on it. And then just get them all nice and snug. We're going to be using the pasture side for my boost stuff. 
And also with the hardware, I lay it in at first. The easy way to tell which goes which is literally pull out your old ones, take your longest one, put it there, shortest one there, and then it just works its way down. But it's already looking pretty, pretty good. So I want to get this whole side mocked up and then leave these so I could adjust and do little by little. All right, one little trick that I do is I put all my bolts in and then I kind of mold my gasket to it. And then we're going to try to roll it on and get it all in in one shot. But we'll see what happens. Make sure you don't drop anything into the motor. That's a big no-no. So just go slow with it and shouldn't be too bad. Make sure you don't leave tools under there either. All right, so everything looks like it's sitting in there. So we're gonna grab some tools and start hand tightening these up and then we'll torque it all in. So we got the gun on the lowest setting and it's just gonna help me whiz them in. So I left them pretty loose. Like, well, maybe I went a little bit too far down. I might wanna back a few of them out that way I might need a little wiggle room over here because I'm just not sure yet, but not bad looking. All right, so we got this all in there pretty good right now. I made sure I put the clamps on. Now we're gonna work on this side. This side I had to do a little bit of different for my setup. So basically I just re-ran my um, boost line just because the old one was just getting old and I didn't want to have any leaks in it. So I just re-ran another line out of there, pretty straightforward. So now we're gonna grab the other side and throw it on. So we got the other side all set up. There's my bung for my boost. So we're gonna try to do it the same way. It might be a little bit more difficult, more difficult, especially because I just dropped the bolt. And because now we have to try to get the crossovers in. So I'm gonna try to knock that out and then I'll show you what it looks like. So a helpful tip when you're putting it in, I did, you basically push on an angle like that. Make sure these bolts aren't dragging on anything. Make sure you don't clip any of your wires. Make sure your gaskets are all still in there. And then you need to push down on there. And then just go through and torque everything. So we snugged it all up. We're going to double check. I'm going to always first tighten up back here. And then I'll torque up here. And then I need to put my uh, boost line right there. So now that we got basically everything um, hand tight and all my couplers and all my like flexible lines are all on. We're now going to whiz these all the way down as hard as like hand tight-ish. And then I got my torque wrench ready set at 7 foot pounds. And then we're going to do again just kind of go in a star pattern and make sure everything's good. All right, so we got everything torqued down, everything double checked, not triple checked, so things could still go wrong. I mean, it is me. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and it looks pretty, pretty good. And without any further ado, bam! Oh, that is looking pretty sharp. Like, I am so happy. It is matching, and it makes it look pop really, really good. I'm very happy with it. Eventually, I will clean up, like, zip tie some of these wires back and stuff like that, but. This is looking pretty good. Now, we gotta see how it sounds. I don't know if it's gonna sound any different, but we'll see. I mean, we're just firing it up. Everything sounds good. I'm gonna check it over, let it run for a while, make sure there's nothing crazy, and then we'll give it a couple revs, and then we'll go for a test drive. So we got, ugh, I definitely got the front of the car way too low. So we're here in Mexico. We're gonna try to do some testing. So right now our peak, we reset it. So we're gonna see what our new peak boost is and hopefully our AFR is good now. I'm okay with not getting traction, but I just want our AFRs and everything to be good. Maybe we'll do one more pull. We hit 19.5 on boost, so Jesus poopy. This car is cooking now. 
So we'll try to do one more pull here in Mexico. And this is pretty, pretty good. Just wait a little bit. So there's gonna be another pull, just so you know, this is 91, can you even see it? It's in the 90s here in hot Mexico. Let's try to do one more. And this might go to this mode now time. I've had it happen before, but let's just see. We are gonna reset our peak again. This time we'll kind of watch these gauges. Jeez, that's way too aggressive. Okay, that just made me wheel hop worse than I have ever done before. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to adjust my whole suspension, but holy crap, this car is, this car is faster than my E55, I think, right now, like 100%. Let's see what we did for boost. 19 point, like right under 20. So it, it dropped it a lot. And the AFRs, I was watching them. They were in the 12s, 11s. I'm gonna re-go over the footage and see what they were because I was just trying to hold on with one hand. But pretty, pretty good. So we just made it home. I got some fans ready to cool this bad girl down. And let's just check. I'm hoping nothing like effing broke, really. Um, no, not really. It's still pretty cold. Like, you can see I'm grabbing it. Like, let me get my thermal going out and see how actually cold everything is. All right, so we just did like four or five pulls and driving, and we're at like 107, 106, 100, really not that hot. Yeah, this side's even colder. I don't know why this side's so hot. Like this side right over here is the hottest. But, geez, it's uh, pretty, pretty nice. I'm not seeing anything crazy down with the pulleys. Nothing over here, nothing, nothing's looking weird. So pretty, pretty happy with it. So the SLK is doing pretty good. These crossover manifolds from Knees Wings, very good. They're actually, like, they're helping out a lot. Just dropping the boost pressure down to help with my IETs. So it definitely dropped my temperature down a little bit. I want a little bit more data on that before I actually, like, determine if they did drop it down. But they 100% dropped my boost pressure down. And now I'm not really going into that weird limp mode, which I don't know. I've seen a couple people are running, like, 25 PSI and they don't go in that limp mode. So I don't fully know why I'm going to it, but this definitely fixed it. So at my setup of a 65 millimeter supercharger and a 178 uh, crank, it dropped me down back to like 19 and a half ish. Sometimes it goes a little bit over right around 20, but super happy with it. And if you guys want, remember if you like my intake, I got it from Rob from Needs Wings and the 178 crank pull I also got from Rob. And I got a coupon code where you get 10% off of either or of them for the m11 2k all you have to do is when you put the purchase in there you just go from where'd you hear about us and just do nd underscore 72 that helps out my channel and that'll help you guys get 10 percent off which right there is a nice chunk of change but i'm super happy with it make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button make sure you guys throw a comment down make sure you share this video with your friends i'm gonna be doing quite a bit more with the slk we're gonna be taking it back to the track soon i got kind of like one or two more little mods i want to do before we go to the track and i need to get my suspension figured out because right now we're just spinning all over but catch you guys later hope you enjoy